So what we're doing today is talking about finishing the rear naked choke. This is based on stuff I've learned from Marcus Suarez, Eric Paulson, Mark Lehman, and watching Marcelo Garcia fight because he's an inspiration. So I'm going to assume that the hooks are in. Getting the hooks in is a whole other thing. And once you get good at this, you can finish it with one hook in or even no hooks in. But we'll just start here for now. You want to come under one arm and over the other arm. You can grip a number of ways. The way I most prefer now is gripping the arm that's coming over, we can call it the overhook, even though it's technically not an overhook, at the wrist. You don't want to do this. The reason you're gripping here is to protect your own wrist from him grabbing it. He can only grab high up on the forearm. If I grab here, he can grab right at my own wrist. And now it's really difficult to choke him. Another way I do sometimes is palm to palm with this palm down. That's because from here, it's a very quick movement up to the neck. If I'm here, then I've got to get clear past the top hand, I've got to get clear here, and I've got to flip so it's an extra movement. So I'm either going palm to palm, or I'm going uh, grabbing the wrist of the top hand. Assuming I'm in rear mount with uh, the under and over, either here or here, we can pretty much assume he's going to grab this, uh, this arm, at least with one hand, usually with both. So I'm going to take you through the moves, and then we'll show how it works against resistance. The first step is to make the jump from here up to the shoulder. What you're gripping and you can feel it on your training partner. There's a little ridge of bone here by the scapula. You're gripping onto that with a tiger claw. If you're just using bicep strength to hold your arm here, you're fighting him and he's going to pull your arm off, unless you've got super strong biceps, pull it down. You're going to be fighting it all the time here. If I grip that little ridge, it just makes it that much harder for him to pull it down. So that's the first move. Here, tiger claw. Then I'm going to come out and I'm going to clamp my hands together again. I'm going to go palm to palm on this one. Even if he's grabbing and pulling forward, the way I stop him from making space is by dropping this arm here. If I'm here, he can pull my arm forward over the shoulder. If I'm dropping my elbow down behind his spine, it's much more locked in. So now comes some adjustments. You don't have to do all these steps. A lot depends on what he's doing. You can assume he's grabbing, going to grab your wrist. There's a couple different ways you can use to tighten this up. The first is to punch this way, because if he's grabbing the wrist here, pulling it down, I want to relocate my elbow to in front of his nose. And if I punch this way and pull in, he's not at an effective angle anymore. Another way I can do is by walking my wrists up his trap. From here to here, even moving it an inch or two will make it a lot tighter. So if you grab, and I'm going to try and turn sideways here, I'm going to walk up here. I'm just trying to take a little bit more space out and a little, uh, gaining a couple of inches here makes a huge difference in the end. Now I'm going to do a move that I have to do almost all the time. I'm going to re-grab the shoulder, tiger claw, on the scapula. And this hand going to do a palm strike, and it's going to come back right away. So this hand is grabbing, this hand is stripping off his hands and coming back. Even if he re-grabs, you've now killed more space. To finish it, I do not do this. I don't shove my hand forward and then try and go here or here, because as Norm just did, he's going to grab my arm, and he could even arm bar me here, which would be really embarrassing to tap to. Just pull my wrist down. So I strip, I come back here, and this hand shoots in behind his neck. Doesn't come here, just shoots, giving lots of space here. You'll notice it's the back of the hand on the back of the neck. That's because here, if he's got a strong neck, he can reach over, grab my fingers, peel them over the front of his face. If I go here, it just fits in the crook of the neck there a little bit better, and it's harder. I can also judo chop it down. 
I lock it in place with my head so that it's even harder to pull it up. Now to finish, I squeeze down, in, and up. I can just squeeze straight in, but if I squeeze down, in, and up, it's got this hooking motion underneath his jaw, and it feels like his head's about to pop off. I think about popping the head off a daisy, and I do that with my thumb. Okay, so now we're going to do this uh, from rear mount, belly up. Got under and over. Spin here. Got under and over here. He's going to be grabbing my wrist. Step one, when I feel comfortable, I'm going to make the grab for the scapula, re-grab my hands. Now I try and tighten it up either by walking my hands, doing that little sideways punch. If he's still grabbing my wrist, I'm going to re-grab the scapula, palm strike, come back here. Now insert it here, down, in, and up, and pop his head off. The topic of what to do with your legs, how to get them in in the first place, and how to maintain them is a really big topic. We'll do that another day. But I just want to address one small aspect. If I'm coming over with my right arm and under with my left arm, generally speaking, I want to be on my right side. I want his head to be on the pillow of my arm. If we sit up and we fall to the other side, he can usually start to work his way out. He can put his head on the ground, his shoulders on the ground, and now his hips on the ground, and start turning towards me. And now it's a big scramble to see who gets up on top. So, I'm over with my right, I'm under with my left. I want to generally be on that side. Say we end up on this side. I've got two basic choices. One is to pull out and change my arms so that his head is on the pillow again. The other is to turn him onto the pillow side. So generally speaking, you're going to usually finish this on the side. It's just where people go normally. You want to fall to the overhook side. So his head's on the bicep and it gives him, a, it cuts out one of his very powerful escape options. So let's say I've got my right arm under, my left arm over, but we end up on this side, and I don't, I don't want to be here, but we are here. One thing I can do to prevent him from starting his escape, of putting his head on the ground, his shoulder on the ground, his hips on the ground, is to stick my own head in here. If, I, if I'm stuck here until I can readjust the position or readjust my arms, I jam my own head in here, and that makes it impossible for him to put his head on the ground. Then I do go to the choke whenever I get the chance. But the head is really useful and really important in controlling uh, the back position with the arm under arm over. Once you get good at this under and over position, even if you only have one hook in, you can choke him. You can, you can try and put this hook in if he drops his hands to defend, bring your knee up and your hand. Perfect. And you see, I didn't do this. I managed to skip a couple of steps, but the hand motion is a direct uh, fingers behind the neck. You can even, I find, with the under and over, if he strips my bottom leg off and we end up scrambling. I finish it quite often from here. And this looks kind of weird, but nobody expects to be choked from here. So this is just a position that you learn to choke people in. It's not, it doesn't actually work, but it does. So from here, grab the trap here, He's not defending directly in behind the neck. There are neck cranks and stuff to do from here, but I don't like them as much as the basic choke. And you can do all the steps if he's grabbing the wrist. Here, here. And you can choke him with no hooks in, as long as you start out with the under and over.